Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome virtually to Old Dominion University. My name is Giovanna Gennard, Assistant Vice President for Strategic Communication and Marketing, and I will be serving as your host for today's event, featuring the Honorable Fernando Jorca Castro, Costa Rica's Ambassador to the United States, to discuss Costa Rica's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Old Dominion University and Costa Rica intersect in many areas, including the advancement of resilience, recovery and humanitarian logistics, biomedical research, and global health, to name a few. It is an honor for Old Dominion to host the first time visit by an ambassador from Costa Rica. This virtual visit is a tremendous opportunity for our students and Hampton Road citizens to learn from the ambassador, who is also the former Minister of Health and former chair of the Costa Rican Social Security Institution on how one of our global neighbors is dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. At this webinar, we have more than 170 participants, including faculty, staff, students, community members, as well as several leaders at international, state, and local levels. We are also streaming the webinar live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you all for joining us. Many of you have submitted questions in advance and throughout this webinar, you may also submit additional questions through the Q&A box on your Zoom screen. Following Ambassador Yorka's lecture, we will answer as many of your questions as time allows. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Austin Ago, Old Dominion University's Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Ago joined ODU in June of 2016. The Provost is the Chief Academic Officer at Old Dominion with responsibility for all undergraduate and graduate programs, faculty recruitment and retention and accreditations. Prior to becoming Provost at ODU, Dr. Algo served as Dean of the School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences at Indiana University Purdue University at Indianapolis and as the founding Dean of the School of Health Professions and Studies at University of Michigan Flint. Ladies and gentlemen, Provost Algo. Provost Algo, would you please turn on your microphone and video so we can see you. Well, good afternoon, and I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to participate in this special uh, project. On behalf of President Broderick, I am pleased to welcome and introduce Dr. Fernando Yorka Castro, Costa Rica's ambassador to the US to Old Dominion University. Costa Rica, which has a population of 4.9 million, has had 112,000 COVID cases and 1,149 deaths as of November 3rd, according to the US Embassy in Costa Rica. The ambassador Yorka has a unique insight on Costa Rica's response to COVID-19, the pandemic, and how the communities around the world are coping with the health, economic, and social impacts of the pandemic, and how they bring people and resources together to address complex health issues and quality of life. Dr. Yorker was appointed as ambassador in 2018 by President Carlos L. Valrado de Casada. But before becoming the ambassador of Costa Rica, Dr. Yorker used his medical training and extensive expertise in health policy to serve Costa Rica in several capacities. 
Some of the positions he has held include Deputy, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Health, and Executive President of Costa Rican Social Security Fund, the largest healthcare provider in the region that manages an annual budget of over $6.5 billion. He obtained his medical degree from the University of Medical Sciences, master's degree in health economics from the University of Pompeo, Fabra, master's degree in economic policy from Camplotes, University of Madrid, and a master's degree in policy and health planning from the London School of Economics. He is licensed to practice medicine in Costa Rica, Spain, and United Kingdom. It is truly my honor and privilege to present to you Ambassador Yoko. Ambassador Yoko, will you please at this time turn on your microphone and video so that we can see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. The honor is mine. I would like to thank Old Dominion University that through the provost, Dr. Agustin Ago, invites me to participate in this webinar in conjunction with the Assistant Vice President, Giovanna Gerard. It's nice to see you again, at least using this technology. Also, I would like to thank the planning committee members, Eduardo Landaeta, Robert Watchwich, Joshua Ver, we Joseph, Christine Lipon, who worked hard to make this webinar possible. Um, I, I also would like to thank all the people who is um, listening today. Uh, and I would like to share with you the experience we have had in Costa Rica facing this um, terrible pandemic, COVID-19, that has been affecting us all, and that for sure will make this year, 2020, unforgettable for um, all of us and the history of medicine and the history of the whole world. Um, I would like to start explaining that Costa Rica, it's going to reach 200 years of uh, independence um, uh, life as a republic and, and, and with a population of more than 5 million people, Costa Rica is a country that, um, please the next one, we are used to receive tourists from a lot of different places around the world. We, we have documented that we receive 3.5 million tourists each year, most of them coming from the United States. But it's good to know also that Costa Rica has a, a, a basic education for boys and girls as a, as a has recognized as a, as a specific right and they should receive this education as, as something for free since 1870. Adult literacy rate for Costa Rica is 97.6%. Um, we are um, a very well recognized democracy since uh, 1889, that's more than 130 years so far. Uh, we are lucky to have a public health care system since 1941, and we abolished the army in 1948. Um, we also developed a strong environmental policy 
that allows us to produce 90% of our electricity coming from renewable sources, mainly from hydropower, 78%, wind, 10%, geothermal energy, which is very important because we are lucky to have, in some way, a lot of volcanoes, 10%, and biomass and solar, a little bit more than 1%. But at the same time, we have 28% of our land um, protected for, uh, uh, by different uh, legal figures like national parks or reserves. And, and it's good to mention that we inspired that project in, in the great example that uh, the United States shared with us a long time ago. But at the same time, Costa Rica has a 52%, more than 52% of our land is covered by forest. And, and we, we documented that we recovered that forest uh, in, in a couple of decades um, in a very natural way, trying to avoid to import species from abroad and trying to recover that forest with our own and promoting landlords to invest in that instead of investing in just producing some other agriculture activity. Please, the next one. Our population, I mentioned 5 million people. Uh, um, it's like most of Latin American population with a, with a figure that shows as a, as a, as a pyramid, but, but we know that we are becoming um, um, a country with a different figure projected for the future, and, and that figure is becoming uh, definitely uh, a cylindric one. Um, in, in terms of groups of cause, cause of death, um, it's good to recognize that almost 80% of our health problems are not communicable diseases. And we have a lot of still, a lot of external causes of death to deal with, uh, mainly coming from um, some, some violent problems that we still have, but at the same time, mainly from traffic road accidents that uh, we are still dealing with. Please, the next one. And it's also good to recognize that the main causes of death in Costa Rica are linked to cardiovascular disease problems, uh, some neoplastic um, uh, pathologies. But we already know that for 2020, um, COVID-19 is going to be one of the main causes of death so far, I'm afraid. Please, the next one. because we like to say uh, this, because we were able to avoid army or, or to invest in, in military affairs a long time ago, we were able to invest in, in it mainly in education and in health. Uh, so uh, the expenditure for 2018 uh, in education was 7.39% of our GDP and in health, uh, for for um, the same year, it was 7.8%. And, and we documented in the first system of health accounts uh, published in, in Costa Rica that uh, the last or the previous five years, we were able to reach 8% of, of the GDP as a, as a, as a expenditure coming from, from, from the GDP. But at the same time, it's good to, rec to remember or recognize a study from the London School of Economics published in 2019 that shows that only two countries in, in Latin America has been able to uh, invest or to follow the recommendation of the World Health Organization and PAHO to try to invest at least 6% of, of the GDP in, in public health care uh, affairs. Please, the next one. 
and and that is that that is very important because that that shows that at least seventy percent of our expenditure is 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 invest has been invested in 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 public health care. But we have to recognize at the same time that the private sector has been growing and has been growing a lot, but moving from um, um, a mainly out of package payment uh, to support it to a, a one that um, insurance companies are starting to play, um, health insurance companies are starting to play uh, a very important role to 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 deal with this private expenditure in health in Costa Rica. Please, the next one. Because of that strong investment in in public health care, we 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 were able to to reach um, since the eighties a very well recognized for international um, health organizations. Uh, universal coverage based on a strong primary care network uh, that we, we we used to call in Costa Rica um, um, based on, on, on basic teams of integral health care, which are small um, medical centers distributed for in, 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 in our territory, trying to reach all the areas of, of uh, uh, and, and, and mainly the population we have in, in Costa Rica. And, and it's good to, to mention that the strong investments uh, between 2017 and 2018 um, supported um, uh, uh, programs like uh, developing a single digital health file that we call EDUS and also to improve emergency medical team um, um, that has been very useful as I'm going to speak about it, uh, fighting against COVID uh, uh, nowadays. Please, the next one. Our public health care model is based on, 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 on a strong network of three different levels, but first and always based mainly on, on primary care um, uh, medical centers that I already uh, mentioned, we call a vice, but also supported by um, local small hospitals or clinics that are, that are able to connect if necessary with regional hospitals and, and they with national or even sometimes specialized hospitals in the country. Please, the next one. And um, because of that, we were able also to um, show nowadays um, a universal coverage with this um, digital um, health file um, that we develop and, and it's good to, 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 to recognize that we develop it starting on this primary care, care, primary care level or first level, um, trying to reach specialized hospitals uh, at the end. And, and I have to Mention and I would like to say that it has been recognized by the United Nations Public Service Award in, in, in 2018, 19, but but it was it was hard and the hardest part of it was to uh, uh, try to make specialists from national hospitals or even specialized. Um, centers and, and hospitals to um, understand that the systems they used to, to have as a local system of the hospital should be replaced by the system uh, that provides this national coverage or universal coverage network because of the, the, the best um, 
uh, or trying to take advantage from, from the opportunity to access file records of, of any patient in Costa Rica, uh, anywhere uh, across the country. Please, the next one. This is an example or, of how um, primary care is connected with this uh, second level, what, what we call second level uh, clinics or small hospitals, and those are connected to the regional or the national or even specialized hospitals uh, sometimes. Please, the next one. And at the same time, as I was mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, the private healthcare in Costa Rica has been growing also, which is something uh, good as a complement of the public healthcare we have. And, and well, we still got some challenges to cover. For example, we have a lack of specialists in some rural areas. Um, but but the, the private sector, uh, we, we may say so far that it got presence almost uh, across the country so far. Thank you. The next one. And, and we know and we've been uh, supporting and investing in, in human talent as one of the most important um, um, uh, things we should do to guarantee, to offer a guarantee that the whole system will have uh, enough um, uh, resources to continue working um, and offering this universal coverage, doesn't matter public or private. Um, we are lucky to have eight medicine schools, nine nursery schools, uh, pharmacy, odontology, microbiology, nutrition. Microbiology is something special in Costa Rica because we have, we, we separated mi microbiologists from the rest of the health uh, professional uh, uh, that we have in Costa Rica. But now, at the same time, nowadays, we have to recognize the biotechnology, electromedicine, and some other engineer, uh, uh, engineering professionals are also very important to keep the, the, the system uh, ongoing, you can imagine if you are jumping or or moving from um, a traditional paper uh, um, healthcare system to a digitalized one. The, the 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 to be able to provide enough engineering professionals to support that it's 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 absolutely basic. Please the next the next one. Because of this lack of specialists in some areas and some rural song still in Costa Rica, um, we've been trying to innovate in, 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 in public-private partnership uh, joint ventures to, to increase the, the amount of specialists uh, we have again we recognize that human talent, it's something absolutely, absolutely, and universities has uh, always got this very special role to play, uh, supporting and providing the best human talent possible. Uh, please, the next one. And, and Costa Rica has been dealing with a lot of epidemics and pandemics. Uh, um, since a very long time ago, we we received we we had to face dengue in, in 1993, and since then has been uh, a reality in the country. Uh, chikungunya in 2014, and and Zika virus, for example, recently in 2016. In 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 talking about Zika, it was amazing how we were expecting. Uh, 20,000 or 
even the worst in year, um, 60,000 uh, cases in, in 2016. But at the end, we were able only to document uh, 100, 649 cases confirmed. Uh, and it was uh, thanks to the strong primary care system we have and the best practices of, uh, uh, of to track and trade and seek and isolate cases uh, we have uh, and we've been developing you know, uh, since many years ago. Of course, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, uh, as a pandemic, uh, it's, some, it's a real thing in Costa Rica and, and, and some other, and, and other pandemics like the H1N1 influenza that we had in, in 2009. And we had a second peak uh, in 2015. So we understand that we are used to those second peaks, second curves, we, we usually, have to face uh, uh, in, 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 in terms of this kind of pandemics. Uh, and well, Costa Rica has, a, has had a strong national vaccination. Uh, shame recently um, improved uh, with the uh, rotavirus and, and HPV, uh, uh, the papilloma virus uh, vaccine recently. And, and well, uh, PAHO has been recognizing Costa Rica as a, as a malaria champion in, two, in, in 2016 or, as a, uh, uh, or for the elimination of measles and rubiola, for example. Please, the next one. But it's true that, that we realize that epidemiologists and, 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 and technical entomologists and epidemiologists also play a very important role. And we found in a diagnosis study we, we, we made in, in 2014 or before in 2013 that um, uh, we, we, we were suffering of a lack of epidem enough epidemiologists and, and, and we, we, we were lucky to invest in, in, in 2014 and to increase the amount of epidemiologists from uh, 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 multiply by, by, by seven in a couple of years. And, and we found that that was very useful uh, to face the, the COVID-19. Actually, the Minister of Health we have is, is a product of this training. And, and, and we are proud to have a very technical and well-trained um, um, ministers and by ministers of health in, in our healthcare system. Please, the next one. Well, Costa Rica also has a strong social policies in general. Um, we have specific policies for mental health or dementia uh, patients trying to avoid the stigmatize them. You know, all the problems linked to and, and we also have a strong, we have had a strong transplant program um, that has been improved in bioethical affairs recently in, in 2014, 2016. And, and we have a strong migrants and we, we uh, policies and, 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 and we constantly offer a political asylum to a lot of people in Costa Rica. Um, and, and it's good to mention also that recently we've been accepted as, as the 38th member of the OECD uh, this year in 2020. Um, but, but I always like to remember that um, um, health policies was one of the first uh, uh, policies that were accepted uh, for the OECD technical committees. And, and we are proud of that. Please, the next one. We are open to the world. Uh, we have uh, 15 free trade agreements. And, and, and of course, uh, um, because our 
in, in investment in education. We we we've been recognized as a country that that offers um, great opportunities for uh, in, in the areas of uh, cultural creativity and and innovation. Um, and and of course, uh, we now are happy to share that. In, in, in 18, in, in 2018, medical devices uh, were the Costa Rican number one industrial export good. That shows you that we are still exporting uh, pineapples and bananas, but um, we are moving to high-tech products, uh, um, ex 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 uh, exporting, well, producing and, and, and exporting uh, uh, activity also. Please, the next one. Costa Rica has been recognized in the region as, as a place where, where biomedical research is uh, it's something, it's a real thing. In, 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 two, in 2004, um, we were able to contribute uh, working with the National Cancer Institute to the to the to, to develop this the the HPV vaccine, uh, and but but we had some legal problems after that because we have a weak um, legal and 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 regulation um, that we should improve. And, and anyway, in in 2014 we improved those. Uh, laws and, and regulations, and since then we recover the the biomedical research, offering all the guarantees of of bioethical uh, process uh, involved, and, and and well, we are still improving the the biomedical research because we we want Costa Rica not only to uh, manufacture these um, uh, medical devices. We would like to contribute, to develop, to improve those uh, medical devices, those technologies can be also pharmaceutical technologies. And, and, and well, please, the next one. We are actually doing it. We, we are still working with um, um, the NIH to improve human papilloma virus uh, vaccine, and we are also working um, with the uh, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, uh, trying to 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 contribute to develop uh, a Zika vaccine, and of course, uh, since 2018, uh, some. Big pharma companies already uh, settled down in Costa Rica. Some pharma pharmacovigilance uh, data management centers in Costa Rica providing um, these um, services to the to the whole world, trying to document um, um, adverse events or any other problems patients may have with, with drugs that are actually on the market already. And you know the importance of pharmacovigilance. And well, uh, we are also trying to, to support some other companies in technovigilance, which is the, the use of machines, uh, diagnosed radiotherapies machines to diagnose and to cure people. But um, all of this is possible, again, because of human talent. In Costa Rica, for a medical practitioner or a pharmacist, a young pharmacist, there is, we don't, we don't have the problem to work on in front of a computer in, uh, or, or just with, by telephone, using a telephone, uh, solving health or patient problems or trying to document their problems, because we we are trying to avoid in, to avoid in our medical schools and health professional healthcare professional schools 
the idea that you always need to be beside the patient as the only option for a healthcare professional. Please, the next one. Well, uh, we have some good health indica indicators to, to macro indicators to, to show. Um, we, we have the, we, we rank second in, in the Americas in the life expectancy at birth. Uh, we already reached more than 80 years average since uh, 2019 and as an infant mortality rate 7.96 per thousand births in, in, in the same year, which are uh, very good um, indicators in the region. Please, the next one. And, and, and our system, health care system has been recognized 33rd uh, on the world's health system. Uh, uh, well, as our country as a 33rd on the world health system nation according to Bloomberg Index 2018, the 25th economy with the most efficient healthcare uh, system and, and the third best healthcare in the world according to the annual global retirement index 2020 and 36 health performance by Legatum Prosperity in Index, which is something. Please, the next. And, and because we were lucky to have all of that, um, um, we knew that facing COVID-19 in Costa Rica uh, was, was something that the, the, the president, Carlos Alvarado Quesada knew and with the rest of the government cabinet, the, including the minister, the minister of health, that uh, we should act as soon as possible. And, and that, that's how in, in January, the 6th of January, we already uh, declare green alert, which was like uh, the first step to become uh, or to accept the situation of a national emergency in, in, according to our law and, and rules in Costa Rica. And um, two months before the first case in Costa Rica that we found in Costa Rica on, on the, the 6th of, of March, that happened the 6th of March, uh, we were able to um, 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 recognize a lot of, of cases that at the end weren't really positive, but we were, our institutions were alert. Most of the institutions got some time to prepare to face the emergency. And, and, and we did it very quick. Please, the next one. Um, we declare national emergency the 16th of March, uh, 2020. And, and we did it with 41 cases that moment. Please, the next one. At the beginning, we, we closed borders, we shut down tourism, massive events, discotheques, bars were closed. Uh, we didn't want to, at the beginning, to, to shut down schools, but at the end we did it because uh, there was a lot of dots at the beginning. If if, if how is going to affect us all the virus, talking about the virus. And, and, and we, we, at the beginning, we were, we tried to be uh, careful and, and we decided to shut down um, school activities. And, and, but, but we were able to keep some some industrial production, some basic commerce and trade, even with, with the neighbors and some other countries trying to keep our exports ongoing. Um, but, but we didn't shut down or turn off the, the country. Uh, and we now 
like to recognize that we applied a, a moderate uh, lockdown in, in Costa Rica. Please, the next one. Um, we, we already knew that we should take care and, and, and overprotect the most vulnerable. Uh, as an example, facing Zika, we were able to protect um, older adults and, 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 and pregnant women, um, mainly. And, and facing the, this pandemic, we try to make some products, hygiene products accessible for, for everyone and mainly to these vulnerable groups. Uh, like, for example, alcohol uh, in, in jail to, to clean your hands or to try to do it constantly. But at the same time, some other products. And we receive a lot of support from the private sector. We have to recognize that, which, which it was uh, something very special. Please, the next one. Um, as I mentioned so far, we, we carry out an aggressive track and trace uh, strategy for positive cases and to try to, to seek and isolate them. Uh, and we were able for about, um, um, at, at the beginning, the, the first 14 couple of weeks to, to control the the amount of cases we were uh, receiving from abroad. Um, the first cases were coming from uh, or were documented on, on people, tourists, but some other uh, uh, were documented at the beginning in, in Costa Ricans that were traveling somewhere else, mainly in Europe at the beginning, but they coming back uh, uh, brought to the country, they brought the, the virus. Um, we, we, we had a lot of problems because it was hard in the international market to find enough PCR tests available. So we tried to develop our own and it's something that, that happened. And, and, and at the same time, we have to say that we were able also to develop some public universities in Costa Rica, were able to develop some uh, ventilators uh, that, that, that at the end um, haven't been used, but, but we keep them to, if, if it is necessary in case of emergency, of course. Another thing that we develop in Costa Rica is that the, the water administrator of the country, uh, um, their laboratory uh, um, were in, in, in testing uh, and monitoring, uh, trying to detect or detecting trace of, of the virus um, on, on surf waters or, or waste waters of small towns, buildings, and, and for example, swimming pools. Uh, please, the next one. In, in, in 2016, um, we, we invested a lot trying to increase uh, ventilators because of, the, because of facing the, the H1AN1 uh, influenza second curve. And, and, and we were lucky to do so because it's true that when, when COVID came, ar arrived, uh, we tried to increase, we, we, we buy in um, um, ventilators from different companies and different continents and, and, and those companies struggling to provide those ventilators to, to because of the problems of the international, the, the international trade problems they were facing. Um, and in any case, uh, we had to deal in Costa Rica with what we already got. And it was great to uh, transfer um, an specialized hospital, small specialized hospital in a 
uh, patient care for for uh, COVID uh, COVID patient care center in in just eleven days. That was something um, amazing and remarkable for our engineers and and healthcare providers, eh, 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 professionals uh, working for uh, La Caja, this social security, Costa Rican social security fund. Um, we also had this uh, digital file in, in an app and we, we were able that, that already registered 3.2 million free downloads, which is a lot in a country of 5 million people. But we, we tried to use it at least to identify the level of risk of contagious uh, by COVID. We weren't able to track uh, using this technology patients um, uh, back then. And, and of course, because of this digitalization of the health sector process and telemedicine we, we develop, it's good to say that in April or since April 2020, 60% uh, of a specialized consultation, mainly the follow-up uh, were uh, done by telemedicine uh, uh, facilities as a, re as a real thing in Costa Rica. Please, the next one. Um, trying to take advantage of our biomedical research advantages, um, well, we have to recognize that on March 20, we, 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 we had the protocol to, to implement hydrochloroquine. Uh, of course, we already know that uh, uh, it wasn't the best option, but we were able to do so in Costa Rica because we're used to, to the, we know the drug and, and we use it for, for other pathologies as, as you may be aware anyway. Um, we had, we are lucky to have the Clomiro Picado Institute, which is um, an, an institution, part of the University of Costa Rica that develops antivenom for snake bites. It, they have 50 years of experience and, and, and we, we, we try and we work to, to we are working, still working, trying to develop uh, an antivirus serum to be used in Costa Rica for patients. Clinical trials, trials are going on already on that. We, ha we, 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 had, um, we already have a genetic map of the virus we have in Costa Rica. And uh, the, 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 yes, the sequence we have, we are facing in Costa Rica. And at the same time, we, we, we are trying to contribute for next year, working with the NIAID and the NCA, again, NIH, uh, prestigious institutions, uh, trying to uh, develop some projects working on, on, on COVID-19. The next one. And, and because we invested in these emergency medical teams, uh, we were able to use the, the, the hospital models, trying to isolate the patients from the rest of the patients, because uh, we, we realized in Costa Rica that the healthcare system couldn't stop, I mean, shouldn't stop ever uh, taking care and dealing with the rest of the pathologies we always have in the in, in in our societies and the population, of course, we the the, the waiting list uh, we have become bigger. For example, for hernia surgeries, for maybe cataract surgeries, and um, some other, but but we weren't uh, um, we didn't stop. Um, uh, uh, taking care of, of the, the patients that need it, uh, even in emergency room areas. 
Uh, we receive a lot of help from the United States. We want to thank and to recognize that. They, they provide us three more uh, uh, field hospitals. Um, and, and this was a, a strong support coming from Southcom. And, and at the same time, the United States helped us to increase the border control with uh, drones um, in, in, in January, uh, in January, since January 2020. Um, at the same time, we have to recognize the support that the George Mason University provides us uh, when they successfully confirm with their specialized uh, virus lab, they have uh, the, 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 the treatment produced by the Clodomiro Picado Institute, this anti, antivirus serum uh, actually neutralized the virus. The next one. And, and of course, uh, we have to work together. Uh, there is no other way to face this kind of pandemics and Costa Rica proposed uh, working uh, to the World Health Organization to um, develop this technology pooling initiative to ensure access to COVID-19 health products to all the population. And, and it's good to, to know that uh, it, it, it got the support of 37 countries when we launched the initiative and, and a couple of Nobel Prizes like Dobuchet and even Dr. Stiglitz supported the initiative. And, and, and President Carlos Alvarado also proposed a phase, which is uh, to create a new, a new fund to alleviate COVID-19 economics uh, during the 75th uh, UN assembly recently. And it got, I mean, it, it got received the, the support from some countries like for example, Spain and, and some other Europeans. Uh, but but we, we realized that it is still not enough because the economy has been suffering a lot with this this pandemic, the next one. Well, at the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Costa Rica was able to deal with the pandemic the first 14 weeks with uh, uh, 0 0.24 deaths per 1,000 um, uh, people and case fatality uh, uh, rate of 0.8% according to the, the, well, the, the great job that the John Hopkins um, uh, Coronavirus Resource Centers, Center is doing it. But, um, and, and we were able to keep the numbers low for about six months, but then we had to face, please the next one, um, uh, some big problems because we were trying to keep trade activity and that was the right thing to do. We, 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 we started to document some transport drivers coming from a raw uh, positive. Uh, and at the same time, informal and temporal harvester workers that are usually coming from a raw, they were also uh, coming uh, positive they they sometimes they were most of the time they were asymptomatic so you know how these virus work and, and it was a problem we lost track of many cases and I'm afraid um, the numbers become uh, they started to increase um, um, and at the same time we try to improve the the our taking advantage of our unique public uh, healthcare system and try to avoid this um, um, this how can I say it this 
networking, traditional way of facing patients. And we develop this transport and logistics center that allows us to move patients from one hospital to another. And that, that was something very important. Uh, now, after eight months of pandemic, we have 30.26 deaths per 100 uh, people, case fatality rate of 1.3. And, and, and well, um, right now, after eight months, we are using 53% of the uh, beds uh, um, in, in intensive care units. Uh, I have to remember that we have a rate of in, in intense care units beds of 7.2 per 1,000 inhabitants. Uh, the next one, challenges. Well, a lot of challenges uh, in, to improve effective epidemiologic epidemiologic border controls options, we, that's something that uh, we must do. Uh, we have to face now a huge gap between the private and the public education system in Costa Rica, because we have to recognize that the private system were able to introduce this online uh, teaching technologies and, and they were able to keep the education going on, but in the public sector, we couldn't make it. And, and it has been a terrible, a terrible uh, problem we will have to face, uh, uh, what well, we are already facing. Um, we should develop some kind of certified best government practices of register and report because it's true that we found a lot of opportunities to improvement in the World Health Organization International Health regu uh, regulation, uh, regulations we have. Um, and of course, how to, finan finan how to increase financial support to the most vulnerable and affected people is something that we haven't solved yet. And in countries like mine, where the tourism is, is one of the most important activities, we are suffering a lot because of that. Despite we already open our borders and we are receiving uh, tourists uh, and, 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 and we are moving in that direction, uh, the whole year has been a very difficult year for this sector. Finally, we already know that el elderly, uncontrolled diabetes, mellitus, and, and obesity were the most important risk factors related to mortality because of this COVID. And that, that is terrible because obesity is something very common in the whole continent, not only in, in, in the United States, in, in North America, it's, it's, it's a problem of, of the whole continent. And, and of course, we, we now realize that a powerful hospital system is not enough to defeat COVID. We should focus on primary care and prevention strategies. Health is a human right, definitely, but at the same time, epidemiological surveillance is a matter of national security for sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Jorka, for your insights on Costa Rica's response to the pandemic. Now we will take questions from the audience. I'd like to introduce you to our Q&A moderator, Dr. Joshua Baer, who's the Associate Vice President for Strategic Initiatives at Old Dominion University, as well as the Associate Research Professor for the Virginia Modeling Analysis and Simulation Center. And to our audience, a reminder that you may continue to submit your questions into the Q&A box on your Zoom screen and we will answer as many as time allows. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Baer. Dr. Baer, would you please turn on your microphone and video so we can see you? Thank you, Giovanna. And uh, thank you, Ambassador Dorca, for the breadth of your presentation. At this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, jump into the question and answer portion of the event. Uh, for the audience, uh, at the bottom of your screen, if you're using Zoom, uh, there's a 
chat button. Uh, we welcome your questions. Please send them to our team and they will for forward them to me and uh, I will pose them to the ambassador. Uh, we have uh, perhaps uh, 10 to 15 minutes wrapping up at 2.40 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we will answer as many questions as time allows. So let's uh, jump in and begin with the first question, shall we? Ambassador Yorka, in your path to appointment as ambassador, you've had several jobs where you have directly served the health needs of citizens of multiple countries, Costa Rica, Spain, and the UK. How has your background as a medical professional contributed to shaping Costa Rica's approach to the pandemic? Well, thank you. That's a, that's a very good question. I will have to say that um, after working during 12, 12 years outside Costa Rica, working as a medical practitioner and also as a medical manager, uh, mainly in Europe. Uh, when I came back to, to, to my country, we real, it was easy to realize some things that uh, we should um, improve. For example, uh, I'll men I already mentioned a couple of things some human talent, how important are epidemiologists. But, but the country was already working on that. I have to, to, to recognize um, um, my predecessor, uh, the minister, uh, Doctora Lopez, was already working on that. And before her, uh, La Doctora Corrales, uh, to be completely honest. But, of course, as soon as we arrive, we continue those projects and, and, and to put them to the limit. Also developing biomedical research, again, uh, without um, evidence, it's, it's hard to make the right decision. And that is something that, that we, we try to improve. Um, at the same time, um, it, it was also an advantage to know how it works some other countries in terms of organization and, and in terms of how they manage or deal with these kind of epidemics and pandemics. But at the same time, I have to say that um, there are some, and I want to point it out, some dangerous movements trying to make people um, avoid uh, uh, accessing vaccination programs, for example, in some other places around the world. And we have to recognize that Costa Rica has had a strong vaccination program going on. Um, and we wanted to keep it that way, but, but those ideological um, ways of, of, of seeing or, of, or, or, or understanding how the vaccination works uh, are, are actually becoming um, something for real, even in, in countries like Costa Rica or the rest of Latin America. And we should be careful because we are now hoping uh, uh, for someone to finally uh, develop this vaccine that we all need and to make it also accessible for everyone if, it's, if it is possible. So, so out, uh, international experience uh, has been very important for me and, and, and I'm sure uh, my, my influence on, on, on the management of the healthcare system I have had, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Excellent, thank you. That's a good segue to our second question here, which is uh, what has been the biggest public health related communication challenge within Costa Rica during this pandemic? 
communication skills and, and to have the best practices in communication. Uh, it's, it's always something very, very, very important in, in crisis, in any crisis um, and attending any kind of emergency. Um, the most difficult challenge we face is the, is the, the, the information that it's fake, the information that it's unreal, not based on scientific evidence, that it's actually, um, um, well, it's, it's actually being spreaded as a disease in, in, in social network and, and some other uh, to technology tools. And, and it has been terrible because you have to be not only fighting the, the pandemic, but at the same time fighting ignorance um, all the time. Excellent, very good. Our next question has to do with uh, resilience within Costa Rica and uh, some of the flooding that's been experienced within Costa Rica. So Costa Rica has experienced devastating floods and displaced populations within its borders. Uh, with global climate change, some say flooding is likely to continue, if not increase. Can you share with us some of the ways Costa Rica is building resilience and adapting to these type events? Well, we, we understand that climate change is, is something for real. And yes, uh, uh, those tropical storms that we used to call hurricanes in the Caribbean are becoming more often. Um, I'm afraid a, a real thing. And, and, and every time closer to the Southern Central American countries, because in the past, they used to travel north very easily. Now they are staying in the South of Central American countries for a while. And, and, and yes, well, we have to, the first thing we realize is that we needed a long time ago, we needed a, a strong uh, institutions to be able to respond um, properly. Uh, and we have a, a, a National Emergency Commission Act that act actually articulates uh, under the leadership of the president, if necessary, if necessarily, all the public and private uh, sectors. So it's good to have in, in, um, organization, uh, institutions, or, or the capability to organize the institution, institutions. It's good to have some resources, um, even financial resources. But again, the most important resource is to have people trained on how to deal uh, with this kind of crisis and emergencies. And at the same time, in terms of environmental emergencies, Costa Rica recognized a long time ago that keeping the forest the best we can is the best way to avoid this uh, destruction of, of uh, the mountains and the river sides. And I mean, and, and at the end, dealing with that, it's, it's, it's not only dealing with the, with the nature, it's also with the, your consequences. And, and, and we have to, to develop these environmental policies uh, as far as we can. Terrific. I just want to say to everyone, we have a, a, a just a ton of great questions coming in, but unfortunately we're pretty limited on time. And as a moderator, I have the, the, the painful responsibility of a, uh, saying this is the last question, unfortunately. But though I'm certain there's opportunities to continue the engagement. So this is an appropriate final question. I suppose. Old Dominion University could benefit greatly from engagement with Costa Rican officials and nonprofits engaged in recovery, environmental protection, resilience, biomedical research, a whole range of issues. In what areas do you see at, as having the potential 
future engagement, a continuing engagement of ideas and approaches between ODU and Costa Rica and possibly uh, so several of the key universities within Costa Rica? Well, first of all, um, um, it's, it's, it will be an honor to develop any project uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the, the, the ODU um, um, as not only in health affairs, also in some other, some other affairs. Um, Costa Rica is used to develop these agreements and, and to, to find a way to develop these public-private initiatives. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of opportunities in, in biomedical research projects, uh, training projects, definitely. And, a special training, uh, developing special capabilities in some areas. But um, there is something that we always, and I recognize that uh, uh, as something that we should improve in Costa Rica. And, and I'm sure uh, not only ODU and, and, and some other uh, uh, international well-recognized universities like this one can help us is to document properly the advantages of the healthcare system of Costa Rica. We, and I, and I honestly and truly recognize that as a, as a weakness we have. We, we are very good doing a lot of things, but we, we suffer of a lack of, of properly documented the whole, the whole journey. I, I, I get you on that. Well, thank you very much. It's been such a pleasure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back over to Giovanna and she's going to uh, close out the event. But thank you very much. It's been an honor. Thank you, Ambassador Jorka and Dr. Baer. On behalf of Provost Dago, Old Dominion University and the Hampton Roads community, I would like to thank Ambassador Fernando Jorka Castro one more time for joining us today. We hope that this is the first of many future collaborations between Old Dominion and Costa Rica. Please join me in thanking Ambassador Jorka with a large virtual applause. I'd like to also extend my gratitude to President Broderick, Provost Dago, and Paul Current for their unwavering support of Old Dominion's global engagement efforts and to the Office of Strategic Communication and Marketing, the Graduate School, Graduate Program in International Studies, Center for Global Engagement, Center for Global Health, School of Public Service, and VMASC and the, the Office of Community Engagement for their support of this program. As well, I would like to thank fellow planning committee members, Eduardo Landaeta, Robert Witovich, Joshua Baer, Wi Yusuf, Cristina Lipuma, and the support staff from Embajada de Costa Rica en los Estados Unidos who helped me plan this webinar. To our audience, thank you for tuning in. This concludes today's program. Please have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy your weekend.